The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Our Lord has told, you shall know the doctrine, and the doctrine shall set you free. When an unbeliever can understand this truth, he tells, you shall know your rightful possession and you shall be set free. What is this rightful possession which he claims around? He thinks that is the enlightenment factor for him in his life. But that's not the Bible tells to us. Doctrine is represented all the time. It is Bible doctrine which has to be resident in our soul. And doctrine alone can set us free. The infernal diatribe which Satan follows is most important and necessary for us to understand that the first book of Satanic Bible, which is not an attempt to blasphemy, but rather as much as it is a statement of what might be termed as diabolical indignation. What is that diabolical indignation? Very cruel, righteous anger. What is this very much cruel, righteous anger of Satan? It thinks in its own self, getting pride against Lord is not a big thing for me. I was absolutely right. I was being there to defend the essence of the Lord. I was doing great things unto Christ. That's what... Satan will think. Diabolical indignation, it induces in unbelievers. It induces into the minds of religion heads. Because Christianity is never an enemy. Christianity is always a friend to mankind. Religion is an enemy to mankind because of its varied practices and presence, what it wants to induce into this world. But Christianity has never obscured the truth. Christianity is not a religion, it is a relationship. It doesn't have such sort of a diabolical indignation to take that very cruel attitude, thinking it is a righteous anger upon the Lord. But rather, Christianity is friendly. It tells to us to believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is not a religion. It is a relationship with Lord God the Father to have that right and true fellowship with Lord God Almighty. And that alone what Christianity can do, and no other way any religion can do it. Because... Satan wants to look around these things very clearly with a rightful position telling to the point, I have a diabolical indignation against you. And which is no way possible, dear brethren. But since this man never knew Isaiah 14 or Ezekiel 28, this with a harsh and without reservation, the men not having proper knowledge about the word of the Lord, has represented devil with the human viewpoint standards. This great human viewpoint standards to cheat them, to deceive them, to kill them with their attitudes, telling that your morality with this, that, with this and absolutely other things. They have not valued the word of the Lord to be taught in the pulpits, dear brethren. Without having proper understanding of Isaiah 14, the revolt, Isaiah 28, its pride. The men have not given a true and accurate introduction of Satan into today's Christian pulpit. Though the Satan is in the fiction, and its dark prince to speak out in the same manner as the spokesman of the Lord of the Righteous. There are no difference between these both when they handle the word without having proper knowledge of, from the original languages of the scriptures. 
Never there has been an opportunity. Always there is a shot of fiction, dear brethren. There is always an enlightenment ministry for you, which is constantly indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to help you to know the word of the Lord more clearly, to understand Bible action more specifically, and to get back and to look upon the word of the Lord more understandingly than to what it happens. These men are not interested, but they want to be always fictionized. Because by looking upon the translations, by not looking upon the truth. The same thing with Satan. Now it is into your fictionized mind, though the eternal judgment has been passed upon it, as told in Matthew 25, 41. Eternal lake of fire forever and forever. It has been still fictionized. It still wants to fight the case. It has challenged the character of God, so God created mankind to solve that case. But then too, though the case has been resolved by millions and millions and billions and billions and trillions of believers in Christ today, then too, Satan is not short of that fiction all the time. It always wants to look as it speaks out the words of the Lord being absolutely right. The fiction which Satan is not able to correct. The fictionized thoughts which Satan will never endure. It wants to tell to you all again. As the metamorphomai, the inner transformation could be bought. Satan with its metaschemat is over. It knows it is always loving to hug the sin. Not loving to hug the truth. So, dear brethren, it has induced the mind of the pastor teachers to pound the pulpits, to define good and evil as they see fit, and gladly smash into oblivion any who disagree with their lies, both verbally and at times physically as well. This is an absolute standard of rejection of Bible teaching in the pulpits. This man, they have come around in the pulpits to pound. And they are free to define good and evil as they see fit. But not as Ladgar the Holy Spirit sees fit in the enlightenment ministry of Ladgar the Holy Spirit teaching of Bible doctrine from the original languages of the scriptures. They don't want to look what the Bible tells for them. They don't want to understand what the word of the Lord reveals for them. What the same fit, what is good and evil, they want to go. And if you go against them, they gladly smash you out. Because of the softness they are fearing around. Because of the ostracism they are looking around. Because of the ecclesiastical displeasure wherewith they have been kept over superiority for them. Because of all such kind of stupid activities, they are never able to comprehend the truth. Because they are worried where their income will be cut when they could tell the truth. And they want to stay around in royal mansions and not to stay around with the word of the Lord and stick for the truth, understand the truth, and recognize the truth. That it is better to stay in a cottage and eat little food, being integrity oriented to Christ and to his word, rather than looking upon in the royal mansions without Christ. And that's what, what they seem fit. They gladly smash it. And if there is any believer who rises against them and tells exorcism should be the order of the pulpit, they think he is a cult and throw him out. But at the judgment seat of Christ, you will realize how much short of fact where you were, rather than short of fiction which you are passing now. And above all, they not only seem define what is good and evil, they want to look upon charity. And they want to look upon with this attitude of satanic infernal majesty because they have an empty sham and most unfairly considering the obvious fact that without their enemy, their religions would absolutely collapse. Without the religion attitude, their ministry would absolutely die out. Without their moral standards of teaching weekly once in the pulpits, it would eventually worn out. That's what they have in their mind, dear brethren. That's why these pulpit ministers have lost the important significance of biblical doctrine to isolate, to categorize, and to show forth, and to introduce to the congregation where exactly you meet face-to-face -face Satan in the Bible. 
And that's why deception and false things are great in today's pulpits of apostasy. How sad it is that the allegorical personage most responsible for the success of our spiritual religions is shown the least amount of charity and the most consistent abuse and by those who most uncutiously preach the rules of the fair play for all the centuries of shouting down the devil has received he has never shouted back at his detractors but rather it has been using the force that action speaks more louder than words and he's been manipulating the minds of the preachers in the pulpits. Manipulating the minds of the preachers to start around with religion. Manipulating the minds of the pulpits to not look upon the word of the Lord more clearly, more dogmatically, more emphatically. Though it has not come into force, because it knows very well what is the plain word of the Lord, how powerful it is. It wants to distract the word of the Lord with translations from the original language. Rather than concentrating the word from the original language, it wants you to concentrate upon the translations. It wants you to look upon the religion deeds. It wants to look upon the charity works for you. And that is what, dear brethren, it is happening. But when the gentlemen of Lord will rise, Though they rant and rave, that's what the devil's in the pulpits. This man, being under the controlling power of the ministry of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit, being a model of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit in the pulpits, he has the time to shout back. The great ministry done by Ladgad, the Holy Spirit, will be done by him. Under the controlling power ministry, when a pulpit minister will rise to tell the truth to his hearers. The great time which has come around, which we need to communicate, which we need to show forth as a model. The apostate leaders are no more to be there in the pulpits. Apostasy begins in the pulpits and ends in the pulpits. It is a time for a pastor teacher to stand up and to shout back, to meditate, to tell the word of the Lord more clearly in respect of the things that happen around. It is not a time for Satan to shout back, but it is a time for the word of the Lord to reign in your pulpits with proper isagogical, categorical, and exegetical information of biblical truth with the true concept of dispensations, dear brethren. And it is our due time to decide what it exactly belongs to Lord God Almighty glory that we are here to pay it back. We are here to receive and give back the Lord that glory which is due unto Him. But as long as you ponder us, which you rule the books with hypocrisy, they are no longer needed when you start exegesis in the pulpits. You need to relearn the word of the Lord. And you need to know what is that slim that tribe which is causing this error. Though we know each verse is of absolute greatness. It is not of inferno, but rather of great work which is alive and powerful. We need to tell that each word is fire. Each word is absolute dogmatical truth. And each word of the Lord is infallible and inerrant. Though the flame of the hell burn fierce, we do not worry because the word of the Lord is more powerful and more burning than this fierce fire because we do not have the flame, but we have the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We need to exegete the word of the Lord and learn Bible doctrine more efficiently, more accurately, more correctly, and tell the truth to our hearers. And if you are not able to do that, dear brethren, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. Satan has been ruling in our pulpits today. Apostate leaders being agents of Satan have not exegeted the word have not categorized the word, have not isolated the word. But now is the time for us not to be in fictionized thoughts of translations, 
It is our time to know the facts. It is our time to pay back the glory which is due unto His name. And it is our time to the praise of His glory in His grace which Lord has bestowed upon us with the uniquely communication spiritual leadership gift to communicate the truth what come may in our way. So which way you want to go, you decide. Tomorrow we shall continue our discourse because the wind is going too strong. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order to believe and an unbeliever tells the Lord God the Father that he believes upon Son. That is the moment itself we shall have this eternal life. Whereas for a believer the concept is very clear, growing grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Whereas for the pastor teacher it is very simple. Be prepared in season and out of season. Because for the diameter of my witnesses, wherever you have been called, you have been called to tell the truth. The diameter of my witnesses, Lord God, the Holy Spirit which dwells in you. Bible doctrine which has been given for us each and every word, we need to exegete and show forth the fire in each and every word which is more powerful than the fierce anger of Satan for the destination wherewith it has been told that it shall enjoy in the lake of fire forever and forever. So that the ministry of a pastor teacher could be of a great worth under the controlling power of ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. Only when we are faithfully prepared, Lord is going to use us. And if you are not faithfully prepared, Lord will never use you. You may think, I am a genius, I am a brilliant. I am a good orator, I am a great dictator, I am capable of doing this with my own human energy, no. With your own human energy, being out of fellowship, you cannot even budge an inch in the spiritual growth. Your straight answer when you could judge yourself as a pastor teacher what you are doing in your pulpits should make it to realize that you need some external source, external power. That external source, external power is a supernatural means of execution of this protocol plan of God by Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone. The two power options, filling of the Holy Spirit and Operation Z, followed to execute the three spiritual skills with the problem solving device as number third spiritual skill, followed by these two power options as number one and number two spiritual skills. Entering into the protocol plan of God, transferring your data of information, Bible doctrine, metabolized from the page of the Bible into your soul. From Gnosis to Epinosis, reflecting in the mirror of your soul. Representing and strengthening your problem-solving devices. Reaching, passing out the spiritual childhood and entering into spiritual adulthood. And this great spiritual adulthood, followed by your doctrinal status quo, cognitive self-confidence with cognitive invincibility as the ultima and in-between cognitive independence then only you can try to mature the thoughts which Satan has been inculcated in apostasy period of today's Christendom. Until and unless you know Bible doctrine more clearly, more maturely, you can never comprehend the truth. Satan is a cunning device. We should not be ignorant of its cunning fables. But rather we should be much more clever than Satan, much more wise than Satan. Do you know why? The commandments of the Lord make simple the wise man. Through the commandments of our Lord alone, we, the believers, have been given this great privilege to become more wiser than our enemies, our enemies being Satan. Though it has its own Bible, though it has its own thoughts, we don't care. But the people who have been trapped should be brought into enlightenment to know the truth, and the truth shall set them free. It is not your birth right. That's what an unbeliever will think the truth is. You shall know your birth right, and the birth right shall set you free. That's what he translated the other day. You shall know the doctrine which is your born again birthright. And that born again birthright alone shall set you free, which is Bible doctrine growing in grace and in the knowledge of the word of the Lord.
And as long as you fail to understand the simple dogmatical truth, dear brother, you will never know where you are, where you are in, where you are standing, where you are, and what you are doing in this Christendom. How the way this Christendom has been easily trapped by satanic viewpoint and satanic thinking. We need to know the truth more clearly, more efficiently, more eminently. So that the truth shall set us free. The people are destroyed. The nation is a cursed one where there is no proper Bible teaching in that nation. In fact, even the Hebrew school of thought tells to us, if in your place where there are no schools which can teach to you right Bible doctrine, that place should be ruined, destroyed. Today, can you have in your place that great Bible school which can teach you the truth? If you want to have that great Bible school, you need to have a desire to learn the truth. And if you want to have that desire, Lord only will send you that right pastor teacher to your place to tell you and explain the truth more clearly so that your place should not be destroyed. Whether you follow this Hebrew school of thought or not, I don't care. But I want to tell you one simple truth. Where there is no proper revelation of the word of the Lord, there the people will perish. And which way you want to go, you decide. Whether you want to give proper revelation from the exegesis, isagogical, categorical, exe categorical method, and which method follows only one dispensing technique, which is dispensation, or you want to follow the useless and worthless things of this earth, you look it. Because for the diameter of my witnesses, dear brethren, you have been called to tell the truth. You have been witness to tell what a, each and every word explains for us from the original Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic, and categorize the subjects. Precept upon precept, line upon line, doctrine upon doctrine. And simple doctrine to be constructed upon complex doctrines. So that you can know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. In the right translation, you shall know the doctrine, and the doctrine shall set you free. Doctrine is the mind of Christ. We have the truth of establishment in three things of this world. The even establishment of the law for believer and unbeliever alike. The spiritual freedom truth of your eternal life by faith alone in Christ alone. When we express our faith in Christ and the privilege of spiritual truth in life is none other but Bible doctrine. So which way you want to go dear brethren, you decide. Tomorrow we shall continue. So, Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge so that in depth we can understand more of your wisdom, Lord, and your grace through the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives, so that we can manifest thy truth to this dying and perishing world, shining like Christ in this midst. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.